Now we shall discuss the client side JavaScript after AJAX update. In our last lecture we have seen how the database is being updated but the form is not being dismissed nor is the table being is being updated. Right now what we shall do is we shall uh, see how to dismiss the form. This is where we are at, at present. This is the table that is visible below having records and this is the form that is displayed here and here is an OK button for the save. We have seen when the user clicks this OK button the database is updated but this form is not going nor is the table being updated. Ideally what should happen is that the values that were chosen by the user should actually be reflected here also. What we have to do is we have to since I uh, will uh, come back to the code and show you where the things need to be done. This is the template we have written and in our previous example this is the function we have added. Now the AJAX data has been posted to that function and that function is returning a JSON like OK or something else for error in case error occurs. Where is this JSON going? Who is receiving it? This JSON will ultimately be received by AJAX option on success. On success, param uh, on success property of AJAX options, it will receive the JSON, the JSON coming from the server. And where, how will we capture that JSON? For this, we have to specify the name of a function. Let us say we can call that function as update table and pass that data coming as parameter to this. If I write it more clearly, it will be update table data. This data will be the data that is coming from the server that is OK or error occurred. This MVC will pass this information as a parameter called data. Data is the same spelling that is required. In case you change this, it won't work. Server response will be captured in this function and this will be a JavaScript function. This function will be written on the index.cshtml page that is showing the table because updates have to occur on that table. So our next step should be to work on the AJAX options so as to tell what will happen when the database is successfully updated. Let us now specify it. I, I want to explain this in detail like I will come to the board here. This is your update table function. One argument it will receive is data. It, uh, suppose this is a uh, schematic of that update table function on the this is JavaScript function that will be called. The second argument should be the ID of the record that has to be updated. The record of the table that is being updated. So that we can use this ID to update the data in that record or the row of the table on the HTML page that is being displayed through index.cshtml. This ID will be used inside the JavaScript function here to update these values. So we will need ID also 
and we'll need data also. This data will be either OK or will be something called error. Then we can put a cross check here that if data is coming OK, we'll write the code for dismissing the dialog. If it is not coming OK, we'll simply tell the user that update failed. So therefore we should now make preparations for passing this ID and data into our on success function. Coming back here now. We can now start writing. This is what we get. We have written up JavaScript on success. This JavaScript function should be called update table data as will come in this parameter from the server dollar hash ID. This ID will be picked from this hidden field where we saved that ID. It will read the ID whatever is the value contained in this hidden it will pass that value whether it is 1 whether it is 2 to this update table function on the client side that is into the index.cshtml file where we will be writing this update table javascript function. This editor template when it is displayed in the modal dialog it will contain all this information that when this OK is clicked things will go to the server when they come back what it has to do that is it has to call the update table function this JavaScript function should be present on the page on which this this dialog is being shown the page is index.cshtml so now we should we'll go to the index.cshtml to write this javascript function we can click here and find a space towards the end we already have one show dialog there and we can start to add this here so here we begin writing function is update table it receives data and id if data is equal to OK, that is if your controller is send action uh, is uh, if your server is sending OK or if error occurred is, is being sent. So here we are writing if data is OK else to do what? If it is OK we'll try to search the tr having id s underscore id if you remember when we were fixing this table we were allocating ids to each tr s underscore v dot id that is this each tr was given an id s underscore 1, s underscore 2, s underscore 3 and so on. Now since we have id coming from the function on success, we can combine that id with s underscore and get this tr. When we reach that tr, we can write it like this. So we are getting that tr, tr reference to that row and here we are writing tr dot find td equal what is happening here. We have written inside that tr find the first td and set its inner html to by reading the value from hash prod code this one. This one needs explanation. See this one. When you were creating the form, how was this one created? You, you, you must have written at the rate html dot 
drop down for and you wrote x goes to x dot prod foreign key prod code foreign key this drop down is actually an html select it closes somewhere here it has angle bracket option angle bracket option now it says this drop down is for prod code fk mvc does is it gives this select an id equal to this property name prod code fk so its id is prod code fk you can check your view source also and it adds options based on the data you are sending to this one in the view bag for software laptop similarly you you have a text box there you must have written at the rate html dot text box for x goes to x dot amount then the id of this input would be amount the names are very consistent so that it is easy to search them from javascript so we have to search the selected option inside it and why are we doing this now this is the form that is shown user has already changed his choices here and then clicked okay user changed this changed this changed this then sent them to the server server said okay and it comes back now whatever server what did it send to the server these values only so what we are going trying to do is read the values directly from this form using javascript jquery because these are the values that have been updated on the server so the purpose is to find each of these elements and read its value and then post it to the td of the tr c tr dot find td equal zero dot html prod code fk option selected this one will select the text of that select which will be selected so it will be either software or laptop whatever the choice was made by the user then in the next td it will get its inner html from the order number text box similarly for the amount and then we'll close the dialog that was being shown so we have tactically updated the tr and closing the dialog and then in case things don't work okay we'll simply show alert data that some error occurred so with this the client side html is very clear we'll now run it and verify it in this particular lecture what we have done is we have learned the use of on success here and it's linking here saving was already done in the previous example in the previous lecture let us run it now click on edit change it to software change it to m order change it to 300 and click save now you must have noticed things have altered immediately so with this we have managed to perform a client side update immediately and database is also updated now we should perform another test suppose something goes wrong here and we'll artificially write throw new system dot exception in case something goes wrong on the server side on the database update it will throw an exception and json error record should be returned let us now run it
click on edit make any changes this time change it to mobile and click on save error occurred error occurred this dialog doesn't go away and therefore no update occurs even this thing is verified in our next lecture we shall present you a summary of the entire process and also give some finishing remarks on the whole story you can try this till then thanks